at the time I'm I'm recording this or streaming this or whatever, uh, this video has 11.4 million views. So I feel like you all have probably already seen it, but it doesn't matter, folks, because uh, stuff like this is best enjoyed with your friends. Televangelist Kenneth Copeland, not kidding, Copeland, laughs at the media for declaring that Joe Biden has won the election and will become president. The media said what? <laughs> the media said Joe Biden's president. Ha 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 The media. Um, yeah, I'm really surprised he didn't pull out a gun and shoot somebody in the audience at that point. So here are a couple of pointers. First of all, this guy is one of, if not the largest televangelists in America. He's worth about a third of a billion with a B dollars. Um, uh, he's one of those prosperity guys, you know, or like one of those financial prosperity kind of televangelists where he's like, if you send me a letter with five dollars in it, good things will come your way. Uh, that that sort of thing, you know. You may have, yeah, the prosperity doctrine. Thank you. Yeah, you may have heard about this in John Oliver's segment about televangelists. These people are basically scum of the earth. Like these people are basically the most evil human beings on the planet, which is really fitting because this guy literally looks like a, a demon. Look at this. Does this guy not literally look like a, like a hell cultist from like Doom or something like that? Look at him. Like, he actually, like, look, his mouth is huge, and just, there's no expression. Yeah, he, yeah, he he looks like a titan from, from fucking Attack on Titan from Shingeki no Kyojin, yeah. He really does look like a, what's interesting to me is, like, you know, I never grew up religious. I grew up pretty agnostic, and for that reason... Religious iconography doesn't really mean much to me. You know what I mean? Like when I'm watching Trigun or Evangelion or any of the other f d any of the other dumbass shit, uh, you know, with with a ton of Christ imagery, um, that's kind of misappropriated or misused. To me, it's just aesthetics, you know. But aesthetics is what matters a lot, especially when it comes to televangelists who need to sell everyone on the idea that they're godly men who you totally need to mail a $20 bill to. And he looks like this. He looks horrifying. He looks... He looks insane. Remember when Copeland was confronted getting into his limo about always flying uh, private jets and his face and voice went all demonic the entire interview? How are you, sir? We'd just like to ask you about why you don't of your donors. Listen, I paid. <laughs> you kind of caught me off guard here, okay? Certainly. Well, this, let, me, let me pray. Well, well let, me, let me just ask you a really simple question. A lot of people think it's unbecoming for a preacher to live a life of luxury and to fly around in private jets. What's your response to that? I just want to say, by the way, that for this man and this man exclusively, Jesus Christ um, of Nazareth would have probably been okay with flipping this motherfucker's tables, if you know what I'm saying, okay? This guy right here. Very simple. It takes a lot of money to do what we do. We have brought over 100, let's see, this, the latest figures just came out, uh, 122 million people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me give you another example and prepare to go preach to a lot of people. A pastor, you are living yes. a life of luxury. Yes, you've am. got great homes, you've got yes, great planes, do. You, you drive in limos. I'm a and very wealthy man. You're a very wealthy man. Yes. Yeah. And some and people I'm would a, say I'm that, is it, is it appreciated? May, may I add something to that? Uh, I, I, my wealth doesn't come from offerings alone. Because you I sell things, books and DVDs. Yes. 
and I have a lot of natural gas on our property. <laughs> Didn't know that, did you, babe? Now I do. Yeah, you do. Isn't that wonderful? Well, I guess. It's wonderful for you. Back when, and Jeez I might add Christ. another thing to face to face personally with 125,000 people. Do you ever do you ever use your private jets to go visit your vacation homes, for example? Yes, I do. Okay. Again, getting back to the comment, you said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, uh, but principalities and powers. Can and you explain what you meant by that, yes. that, by that term then? Yes. Just, just explain, because it's yes. really simple. You said you didn't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. What did you mean? The, well, let me ask you. Do you think that let people that fly that. commercial are demons? You give me a chance to talk, sweetheart. I'll explain this to okay. you. But it's a biblical thing. It's a spiritual thing. It doesn't have anything to do with people. People, I love people. Jesus loves people, mm. but people get pushed in alcohol. Do you think that's a good place for a preacher to be and prepare to? So as I understand it, and again, you'll have to forgive me because I didn't do religious shit when I was a kid, but I think that a televangelist who says that he's religiously incapable of flying on commercial airlines because he might be near the common folk. I think that's what he's saying right now, right? He's saying that he is priestly and above it all and that he shouldn't even come in. Didn't didn't Jesus literally like wash the feet of prostitutes? But this guy's saying like, I will not go into a plane with those devils. Anyway, this guy's a massive piece of shit. But it is funny. The 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 idea that he's like coping this hard about the fucking election results. <laughs> Just phenomenal man. Genuinely phenomenal man. But I think it's it speaks a lot to the collective delusion of the far right, because um, I feel like this guy right here, his reaction is kind of like typical of the reaction of a lot of other Trump supporters I've seen, which is that they see information they don't like, and rather than processing it or anything like that, they just utterly fail. They just completely refuse to con to take that information into their brains, and they reject it. And they're proud of rejecting it, too. Oh, yeah, if you want candidates for fucking adrenochrome, this guy right here is uh, pr pretty much top shelf. Pretty much top shelf right here. Um, yeah, 100%. 100%. But, um, yeah, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, 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 100%. Uh, but no nonetheless, yeah, it's just... This fucking guy, I genuinely think this is one of the most evil men alive. Yeah, it's just funny because, like, there are, like, literally tens of millions of people who have no, who like this guy, who think this guy is, like, a incarnate heaven, you know? Like, like he's here on earth to deliver the word of God to his, to his flock. And he's this obviously evil, you know? It really makes you wonder about, like, satire, you know? Like, and the inability to satirize the world. You know what I mean? Like, imagine if you were transported into an alternate universe, and, like, every it, we li still live in a democracy. It's liberal America, you know? Um, but, like... Their, their news broadcasts are being delivered by somebody in, like, a military outform with an armband who seek Hiles before and after. And you're like, bro, that's a Nazi. And they're like, um, I'm sorry. Do you really uh, think that it's inherently Nazi-esque to wear a military uniform and an armband and to extend your arm in that gesture specifically? Uh, it sounds like you have a lot of unresolved biases that you need to, or some shit like that. And the question is, like, how, and they're being sincere. And the question is, how do you satirize that? Like, how do you satirize this? A cartoonishly evil man who does everything a holy man shouldn't and nothing a holy man should. A uh, multi-millionaire um, 
who looks like Satan. Oh, this is what you see? Jesus. I don't know what the fuck that's from. Uh, yeah. Like, how do you convince a person who likes Copeland? Copeland? That he's actually evil. Like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Like, what would you say to a person? To convince them? I, I don't think you can. You know? I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible. Say that he's Antifa? Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna, I don't know if that's gonna do it. Anyway, this guy is just a fucking, a fucking wacko, but it makes me worry about the future of satire, you know? I like, when Republicans are like, uh, you really think Trump is a fascist? When Trump's on Twitter just like nonstop spam posting about how all his enemies are anti-American, and how America is crumbling, but how only he can bring it back up and make America great again, and how he's been cheated out of the election. And I look at that, and I point at that, and I'm like, you're really gonna give me shit for saying this is fascist, you know? You're really actually gonna make me sit here and have to fucking with a fine-tooth comb, go over all these points and specifically explain how this is fascistic. The real issue is that usually when people act that way, when people don't believe that Trump is fascistic, they're themselves pretty fascist. But with this guy, the people who support him aren't all televangelists. So what the fuck is going on? Like, how do you, how, like, how do you pull people out of that? I have no idea. I have no idea. I genuinely don't. But he's terrifying. He's a terrifying man. Yeah, absolutely terrifying. No denying it. Yeah, Colt. Yeah. No, yeah, of course it's Colt. Yeah. 